if we want people who are politicians in Washington to be making all of our economic decisions, we're going to find that this engine that created the wealthiest country in the world can be dismantled and will be dismantled. You're watching Paul Jacob. This is Common Sense for the last full week of July 2019. The Bernie ran into his problems with the $15 minimum wage, which in the end, you know, at first he was going to, he said, look, you can work fewer hours, which of course fed into the whole thing everyone says about the minimum wage, which is that when you artificially say you have to pay more, you tend to cause businesses to hire less people, to cut back on hours, to do all kinds of things that doesn't benefit the people you're pretending that you're trying to benefit. Um, but then, of course, uh, Bernie came out and said he was going to raise their their salaries or, you know, and, and so on. And Bernie is, you know, he's doing that to position well in the newspapers. But I've got to say that I want to work on a presidential campaign where people are committed to working their butts off to accomplish the mission. One of the nice things about working in politics is that you're constantly with people who work long hours and then get up early the next day to go to work again because they believe in something. And you know, half, half the time or more, what they believe in, you're thinking, oh my goodness, that's a terrible thing to believe in. But it is refreshing that people believe in something and will work hard. And you know, in campaigns, you're working around the clock. If you're, uh, my wife used to joke that you know, if, if I was paid hourly, I wouldn't be making minimum wage. And she was probably right. But that's kind of a beautiful thing. And to think that he's running a campaign where you have to take a break from trying to get your message out so you can negotiate the hours and the time and the, uh, is, is silly. And then, of course, because Bernie isn't quite silly enough, Rashida Tlaib this week said that, no, $15 isn't enough. It should be a $20 federal minimum wage, meaning that not only do you have to pay pay $20 an hour in places where labor is very expensive, like Seattle or New York or Chicago, but that in rural Kentucky and in Arkansas, where I grew up and other places, uh, you've got to pay $20 minimum an hour. And of course, we talked about the fact that who is this going to benefit? Well, it'll benefit the people who are working on robots and uh, and automating uh, fast food restaurants so that we can cut out all the employees. Um, it's insane. And But again, this is, you know, if we want people who are politicians in Washington to be making all of our economic decisions, we're going to find that this engine that created the wealthiest country in the world can be dismantled and will be dismantled. So it's, it's uh, you know, the, the squad doesn't need to go back to where they came from, which of course in three out of four cases is right here in the good old USA. And in the fourth case, he doesn't need to go back anywhere. He's here and that's great. Um, but they could all go back and maybe read Economics 101 or maybe Henry Hazlitt's Economics, what is that, Economics in One, e one Lesson? Uh, and uh, or something, or maybe just walk down to your local fast food place and ask the manager a couple things, or or bump into a restaurant tour and ask him a few questions, and uh, they might know a whole lot more than they know today. There was an initiative in Washington uh, a year ago, two years ago, three. Um, time flies when you're having fun, and and uh, but it it basically changed it to where you everybody got the same minimum wage, and in restaurants there wasn't a lower minimum wage, and I think the idea was that they would stop tips, um, and it was very controversial. It passed in Washington, and then the council pretty much gutted it, but it gutted it with a lot of public support for gutting it because I think after it passed, when it passed. I think people were focused on this is helping the little guy. And then after it passed, I think a lot of people decided it wasn't helping the little guy at all. Um, now, my view on that, uh, because I, I was 
asked by the Post reporter a couple of times because term limits they had gutted. Uh, and it wasn't because it hurt the little guy. It was because it hurt the council. Uh, and the council has the ability, unfortunately, in Washington, any initiative that passes, the council can just rip up and change any way they want. But the truth is, in those kinds of cases, it seems to me that even if the council believes it has to intervene and change it because it'll be disastrous or because what's happening is unconstitutional and will destroy the human rights of all kinds of people, they ought to then also put it back on the ballot and make their case, um, you know, and, and, and let the people have their say. Now, if, it's, if it is destroying people's human rights, go to court. And the courts aren't, aren't going to allow people's rights to be destroyed, I don't think. But, but it's the kind of thing where it's, it's easy. I think in this case, they were, the council was probably right that the public had kind of turned against the initiative. But let's not guess. Let's put it back. I mean, I, I'm not a believer in democracy who thinks that when two wolves and a, and a, and a sheep vote and they decide to eat the sheep for dinner, that that's okay. But I do think that democracy is almost always a force for controlling power and that there is a process and it's good to go through that process. And, and we find again and again that democracy by the people who are talking about how wonderful it is and then the second it doesn't work for them, they're ready to gut it without any sort of process to protect what they say they hold dear. If you really believe in a democratic process, then, then you got to believe in it when you don't win. You've been watching Paul Jacob, This Week in Common Sense, for the last full week of July 2019. Read Paul five days a week at thisiscommonsense.com. Thank you.